Welcome to our Senate culture. My name is Matt. Jason. I'm Jeff. And we have a beer from Belgium that is so rare, you will never see it. So this is uh, this is from Boca Rider. Well, actually, it's Bach now. And it was once called Boca Rider. And then they had a uh, legal dispute. And now they are just called Bach. Um, but we will forever and always call them Boca Rider. <laughs> Which translates into Goat Rider. Yeah. And mm, um, goat. so in in, like goat cheese. in beer, there is a style called uh, Lambics or Gooses, which is uh, an open fermented um, wild uh, beer, which mm. means basically they use, they just let like air, yeast in the air, fly around and get in the beer and do the uh, fermentation for them. It's very funky, very, um, very nuanced. Um, it's, it's, and it's an acquired taste, but like anything that is absolutely amazing, uh, like anything that anybody appreciates on like an nth level, it is something that you just really have to like understand to be appreciated. And that is what uh, this Boca Rider uh, Lambic is. Is this is this one a Lambic or a Goose? It's a Lambic. So with, you know, we talk Lambic. So uh, we talk sour beer. <clears throat> if you're talking sour beer, and for most people watching that would be familiar with that in the United States, they would think pretty tart. Um, you might even think fruited too, though. So... There's two different types in my mind. You think open fermentation, which is your lambic, your goose, your you know Belgian beer, and then the American wilds, which are like kettle soured. Kettle, have, and what that means is basically it's closed fermentation. It's a very controlled sure. system. They introduce and uh, they inoculate the, the the sour part uh, yeah. in a very controlled system. It's not wild. Correct. It's also in my mind when you think of flavor and taste, it's more sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not as nuanced, and then a lot of times they try to cover that some of that up with, with fruit. With Boca Rider, he has taken you know a big thing over in Belgium is you don't just brew beer, um, you blend. Yeah. So that is actually a profession. And he does not brew any of his ale. To my knowledge, if he has not started in the last year, and I couldn't see anything online, he ha- he does not brew. He yeah. only blends. So he actually buys the wort. wort. It's called wort. Like when you basically before you ferment it, before it's alcohol, he buys it from other uh, breweries, <clears throat> and then he just blends it, and that's so, it. So from that note, you know, you talk about other breweries over there. So Lindemans, um, I think everybody would see that one in the store. Mm-hmm. If you were to go to your local liquor st- liquor store and ask them for a goose or a lambic they would probably point you to lindemans um, a lot of that's sweetened sweetened so it's a little different taste so he uses lindemans that's not sweetened he uses Gir- girardin or giardine and then he uses the troke so that's the three um producers that he uses their wort to make his blends yeah he thinks you know after talking to, and the guy that runs this or guy that does it is roth um roth Soverins, i think he goes by but um, when he blends those, he thinks that a troke, um, lambic, or wort is what makes his beer. Right. Yeah. Which is interesting because when you when you talk about lambic, you talk about goose. There's a lot of like people that are mm-hmm. in in beer. They understand. There's there's a lot of names that come up right on the forefront. Stuff like Cantillon, Drifontaine, yeah, Drifontaine, and and, um, and he actually eschews those for more. I don't want to say pedestrian, but like more like regular, you know, just like a more regular medium. And that's and that's yeah. fascinating. Well, it's, it's weird over there, too. So when we're used to talking to American breweries, we're thinking of if you're a side project or if you're a country boy in Lexington, Kentucky, you make your own beer. You yeah. don't buy somebody else's beer and then doctor it up or, or right. blend it. It's your beer. So over there, though, in Belgium, like they don't view it that way. Like yeah. blending is actually a as good or established as a brewery. Right. So yeah. Yeah. We we were first exposed to them. Um, the first beers we had were probably what 2017 when we were at the uh, McKellar Fest in Boston. In Boston, mm-hmm. 2017, 2018 ish, somewhere through there. Yeah. Does that seem right? We just rotated in and out of the, out of the yeah. Boca Rider line. So yeah. I remember when we went though. Um, I don't think. I don't know if you all had heard of them. Maybe you'd heard of them, but no, I really didn't know. Who they so were. I remember when they opened the Where doors. We had so this was not a great idea. Everybody if you went to rushed beer fest. to the yeah. Boca Rider. Yeah. Not a great idea if you're going to a beer fest. Mm-hmm. We had three different session tickets mm-hmm. for it in two days. So <laughs> we went to three beer fests in two days, which was pretty rough. When the doors opened, we had VIP access, so we bought the early entry. 
We ran in, got in the boat riding <clears> line, <throat> and then we, one of us stayed in that line the entire festival. Mm-hmm. And then the other two would go to other booths, bring back beer so Samples we could try those. Right. This is obviously pre-COVID. So, pre-COVID. <laughs> so crazy fact about that mm-hmm. that uh, fest we went to. I think that over those two days we were there, yeah. Yeah. I think it's the first time I've ever pooped in a porta potty. <laughs> And really? as much as much as you day poop, two. It was as, day much two. As, as much and as, as much as you too. poop like thirty times yeah, a day, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I just don't I'm surprised. Poop in bodies because yeah. it's gross. So you don't go like NASCAR events or anything. Like, you don't go to NASCAR events. To I do not go to NASCAR events. <laughs> uh, so what do you what do you do if you like you're in a public venue and you just have to poop? You just like literally hold well, it to I your use bowels. A, like, no, I use to, a like, toilet, but I've never. But I don't usually have to poop at a porta potty. Like so, like if like in a porta potty, I got to poop. But like if nothing is available, and here's what I remember about this poop is that I said to jason like this is day two and i think i said hey man oh, jesus i i i pooped in the porta potty he goes yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah i was like yeah okay yeah. no big it's deal dude. it's the it worst works. it's the it most works. disgusting fucking place yeah. to poop ever. Welcome welcome to and america. i was in the army and i pooped in a lot of yeah. places welcome to america well when we're, when we're at the beer fest for 14 hours in the 48 hours and you gotta, we're, we're probably at some point you're gonna have to poop. yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's actually try this. Let's, let's crack it open, and then we'll go into a little bit of what it is. So, mm-hmm. you know, first off, again, the guy's name is Roth. Um, we actually got to meet him at at McKellar Beer Fest in Boston. Pretty so cool, pretty giant, cool dude. What was that giant ass bottle there where he was opening? I think he had uh, a. Yeah. It was like a. I don't even know the giant, name. It was not it. even it was just a magnet. Huge magnet. magnet. It was bigger than a magnet. I think it was. Huge. Was it fifteen liters? No. No, it was bigger. No, it was like a. Well, actually, I don't remember how big. I, I got we the got court. pictures. I of thought it. I lost the court, but I found this. I yeah. the court from. When you guys got the court, right? Uh, me, I, yeah. me. So we were the first three in line for that when they actually poured it. So with Ralph, he actually started in 2013, um, and his his background is he started in wine, and then from there, he actually met this guy named Uli, um, Ulrich Kramer, I think's his name. So he's a blender, pretty small batch, very renowned. Um, but at this point, you know, in 2013, nobody had heard of Roth. They had heard of Uli. So mm-hmm. he was just starting to get a name. Yeah. So Roth kind of learned under him, and then he went out on his own. 2016 is when he first came to the U.S. That was a CBC. And then in 2016, also, he won Rate Beer. That's, I think, the website you're on, right? Yes. Yeah, I think Jeff actually is the only contributor, but he won <laughs> almost fourteen thousand <laughs> sure reviews. Yeah, fourteen thousand <laughs> views that you've had <laughs> reviews. Of rape beer. reviews. You've viewed rape beer fourteen thousand times. Shady Paul's. <laughs> and that's when people started first hearing about him. So when you think of a small batch beer in the U.S., what do you think of number wise, Jeff? What would you think? Six. No, no, no. Be realistic. <laughs> So well, if I, number if, wise, it was. If okay, so how we do you drink we've, it? We've, no, no, we've had some great beers. So how many look, barrels they make? No, no. Let's say we've had a side project mm-hmm. derivation beer, right. whatever. Okay. BBT. How right. many bottles of that do you think they make? Two thousand. Okay, two thousand. Matt, what would you think? Like uh, five hundred to a thousand. Something okay. Like that. Okay. Yeah. So the biggest batch that he has ever produced, Roth, 300. is three hundred fifty bottles. Ooh, I nailed it. Yeah. And that was Zomer saison. We actually really? got to try that one. Yeah. So that was the blend that was home. Good. It was good. It was, was very good. good. Yeah. So that's the biggest batch he's ever made as of. And I think it was in twenty. So he doesn't have to buy a lot of bottles, basically. What do you mean? Well, it's only three hundred bottles, man. Well, I don't think he. I don't think the glass is the problem. With <laughs> he only buys three hundred bottles. That's not a lot. His costs are pretty low. Yeah, but he does. So, so what? Three hundred caps. <laughs> he's 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 buying beer yeah. from other breweries. Three hundred labels. He's buying fruit to blend his beers, and he's like, "Hold on, how many bottle caps do I need? Because that's the really important issue here. That's what we need to figure out." So I remember we Had first met him up there, though. Like he was so humble, mm-hmm. you could tell he was overwhelmed. He was drinking, uh, drinking Coors Light. He's drinking Coors, Coors Light. Yeah. He's pounding those Coors Light. We, we might actually post on our Instagram. Yeah. We might post a Cooper's Live yeah. picture of Roth. Looking back at that McKellar Beer Fest, I think he took 25% of his entire yield and served at that festival. Hmm. Really? That's, that's crazy. That's yeah. huge. Well, that's huge. Probably, that cannot be profitable. 15% was probably in that one giant magnet model. <laughs> yeah. yeah, That thing was like two feet, three feet <laughs> you tall. Were, Do you remember you that? You were like... Front, I, was, like, I had a video, yeah. You were that's up a good front, video. like up a front. 13-year-old girl at a Britney Spears concert. Like, you, were, boys. you were just yeah. on the stage. Rah! Yeah, I know. Yeah. You, you knew that because you were right next to me, like <laughs> watching it the entire time. It. So let's go to this specific beer. So this is a Frambu's uh, Noi, Noi uh, U. Is that how you say it? I had to look mm-hmm. that up. 
So this one is a blend of one, two, and three-year-old Lambic with three varieties of raspberries, Madagascar and Tahitian vanilla beans, and then apricot pits, which is kind of odd to us all, right? Why do you use apricot pits? So framboos, you think raspberry. So this is going to be a raspberry Lambic with maybe a touch of peach. So first thoughts, Jeff, what are you thinking over Um, there? It's tart. It's a little tarter than I expected. Um, It's got a great little funky nose. It's nice. A um, little tart in the taste. Uh, I don't think the raspberry is super pronounced for me. For me, okay. And I think maybe it's not supposed to be, but that's the idea behind. Um, I guess if you if you just blend, mm-hmm. um, the whole point is is to just basically make everything very subtle. Mm-hmm. I may be wrong. Well, you want to you want to have you want to have the pronounced flavor of what you yeah. want. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. You, you know. We try. We've 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 had lots of crazy stuff. We've had like the we've had some Kit Kats. The fucking um, <laughs> the the hard the seltzer smooch. You take smooch for example. Smooch, okay, yeah. we had we did an episode on uh, the rarest hard seltzer you can get, and it's basically it's it's a daiquiri smoothie. Mm-hmm. You know, well, it was good. Yeah, but it's just like a just like a just a punch in the face of flavor. Right. Really enjoyable, but just like shitloads of fruit and not a lot of alcohol and just like as, as potent as you can make it if flavorful wise. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Something like this, um, I think this harkens back to, we, we talk about like the side project, which is another mm-hmm. episode we did long time ago, long time ago. Different and, um, shirts. Yeah, different shirts. Mm-hmm. And um, Or not. The, the idea there, they, they do a lot of blending too. They make mm-hmm. their own beer, but it's just like finding that perfect balance of everything. It's not making anything necessarily stick out. You don't throw, uh, would you say Tahitian vanilla beans and Two raspberry in there Madagascar. to make people say, oh my God, I can taste t- Tahitian vanilla beans and raspberry, but you just want them to taste it and be like, mm. this all works really well oh. together. Do you I get think a strong vanilla taste to it? No, but I'm saying that's the point. You don't want a strong mm. vanilla taste. You want everything to work well in balance and just enjoy the experience. <clears throat> so, but here's, and I agree with you, I think it's a little tart for me. Um, it is a and, I, tart. and I'm pretty sensitive to that too. That's the reason I prefer um, Lambic versus American Wilds. American Wilds are very uh, it acidic. Just straight set. Yeah. Just yeah. It's like, it's like you took a vat of ass and just drank it. A heartburn <laughs> kicks in immediately. Yeah. 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 It's got a little red wine vinegar to it. It does. So, you know, with I'm a little surprised by this one. So, I mean, I've probably had. 20 Boca mm-hmm. Rider. I mean, we had a ton right. in, in Boston. So, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have a few bottles at home too, but this one here is probably my least I favorite of the bunch. Same thing. Yeah. I am a little surprised by this one, though. When you have vanilla beans in two different types, in my mind with vanilla, they almost use it as like a lactose in, in American beers. Yeah. It kind of smooths it out or should. I don't think they smoothed this one out. Like yeah. this is probably the this most. This is not my favorite. Poker. No, no. This was probably I was excited, really excited about this mm-hmm. one, but it's probably the least favorite I've had. Now it's still it's really good. I don't mm-hmm. have a problem with it. If I compare this to a Cantillon, like I, I like their Rosé de Gamberness better than this one, which is raspberries. Mm-hmm. I like their Magic Lambic better than this one, oh, which is Lambic. raspberry with vanilla. So you That's know, nice. there's there's I different things. There, nice. there you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now if you compare this to Dre Fontenin. Um, some of their homage, I like this better because theirs get really acidic with those yeah. things. So, you know, it's interesting. I'm a little surprised by this one, but still very appreciative. How would to try. you compare this to um to the Bud Rita strawberry? So the Bud Rita strawberry, I would say this is slightly better than that. I don't know for sure. Just I don't curious. know for sure. Yeah. Just curious. The, the lemonade one, though, it's close. <laughs> it's really close. Yeah. The lemonade <laughs> to Bud quotient of that yeah. one yeah. is just yeah. like, it's right. The blender, it's Budweiser, he's, he's top. Budweiser, blender. Bubba, Bubba's or blender. Is Bubba the blender there? Yeah, he's there. He's there. Yeah. And again, he's, he's also, also the janitor. janitor. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Doing some Charlie work. Yeah. So I I think I'm actually going to disagree with both of okay. you on this one. Okay. Um, controversy on I, the R. Yeah, and I I think what I appreciate about this one is that the vanilla specifically is not so pronounced. I think when you see how many different types of vanilla beans are there? Madagascar, Tahitian. I think when you see on a label of mm-hmm. any American adjunct mm-hmm. anything beer, and you see two types of vanilla beans, the first thing you expect is, "Oh, I'm going to get punched in the dick with vanilla," which is exactly what I want. Punched Correct. In the dick? Yeah, and that's Hard. not that's not what you get here. <laughs> I don't want to get punched in the dick. <laughs> no, that's but, not cool, dude. Then yeah, why'd but, you drink this? That will hurt. Yeah, then why are you even here? You signed a waiver. Did I come here to get you, punched you in the dick? You signed a waiver. That's 
that's actually was the that, end of the episode. That so. my invite? <laughs> yeah. Please come to my house yeah, to get did punched he not, the Did he not know that? <laughs> What what I appreciate about this is that it's not just all vanilla. Sure. Like um, I don't I, know that I get any vanilla. I don't get any yeah, vanilla. I, I think it's I think it's very faint, mm-hmm. and it, I'm kind of with you. It's like I don't, but I don't want a lot of vanilla mm-hmm. in a lambic. I think vanilla in itself in a beer. You've had a lot of beers with vanilla. It's sure. easy to lose control of that adjunct. Like you put like one too many vanilla beans in there, and it overtakes mm. everything in that beer. And all of a sudden, you just got a vanilla bomb, and you're like, oh. I'm just drinking vanilla, and it's it's right. not great. Who and wants I to think, do that? yeah, well, you don't. No, I don't. But <laughs> some people see that, and they're just like, that's all they expect. I I appreciate this because it is well balanced, and it's not. There's nothing that really comes to the forefront to where you're just like, I can pick out all this stuff. It's so you don't not, think it's, it's too smooth. acidic? I think it is a little more it's on, it's acidic. On the edge, right? Like it's yeah, it's all. It's not too much, but it's close. But the thing is, this is a style that mm-hmm. is 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 a. Technically speaking, it's a sour style. So I mean, it's Correct. supposed to be anyway. It's uh-huh. it's not. It's made with lemons, I think but it's not a lemon. And sour should not be put in the same category. It's, I agree with that. It's, they're not the same. When you say sour, I mean that can that can encompass a mm-hmm. huge. But lambic range. is not really sour. Some of them are though. Lambic is, but lambic is not. The intent of lambic is not to make a it's, sour it's beer. More funky, and it's also right? not necessarily sour. It's funky. It's yeah. wild. Sour it's a is something tart. different. It Maybe. can be, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Good yeah. call. I know. What's your you? <laughs> That's the first opinion we've agreed with Jeff on, or I've agreed with Jeff on. Yeah. So uh, with this one, this way to Jeff knows beer. No, the new show God. on. Please God, um, don't listen to that show. About- <laughs> so if I, if I compare this stuff I, I've had, and I, I talked about it a minute ago. So the Drifon and stuff, like so, Framboos and Homage, Framboos. Um, I think you know the older versions of those I like better than this one, but the newer versions I like this better. And and why is? I'll agree with Matt. Some this is more balanced than some of those. Yeah, some of those are just so sharp. Yeah, um, but I know you've had a lot of Boca Rider, just like we have. Where do you rank this in there? You don't have to rank it specifically, but like lower third, middle third, top third. What do you I think? I mean, I would say this is somewhere like just around the middle. Okay. I mean, this okay. is. I don't think this is anywhere near uh, the the bottom. What I had, um, but like thinking back on what I had, most of the stuff is pretty good. I'll be honest with you. Some of the stuff that I think, uh, as far as Boca Rider goes, there's some of the stuff that I think ranks lower is the stuff that has really pronounced vanilla, and they've got a few of those where it's just like so strong vanilla, it's overpowering. I don't like that. I don't like that misbalance. Um, that's something for an American adjunct like stout, and like you expect that in that. Sure. Something like this with a lambic or like a, you know, something from from Belgium. I want it to be a little bit more. You know. Yeah, and I guess Sedentary. I guess when you look at this though, if if I looked at this label as an American label in, in a stout, and it said lambic, raspberries, right, vanilla, yeah, apricot, yeah, I don't get any apricot. That's last. Well, no, I don't get any vanilla. The apricot's like the seed or whatever. But it yeah. is. So it makes me. I mean, I guess it's you know, it's on par with what the label says. Yeah. But my other thought is. Did apricot pits make this more tart? Do they add anything I at find, all? I, I find tartness. So. Oh, we, um, well, not always. <clears throat> that's not fair. But mm-hmm. a lot of times has apricot flavor. Yeah. So we, we, I've had this discussion when I used to be. I used to be a member of Casey, um, and 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 I've liked a lot of their beers, but undrinkable. Yeah. They have been. They've been very acidic. But you know, I talked to some of the guys, and there's there's two trains of thought with Casey. There's team fruit, and there's team no fruit. So, you know, mm. self explanatory. Fruit team fruit means I want a Casey Saison with fruit. Team no fruit means I want the base Saison, whatever. Right. So I, I found myself at first being team fruit, but then as it went along, I wanted no fruit. And the reason why, the fruit was always more tart. Right. Always. hundred mm-hmm. percent. No matter what the fruit <clears throat> was, prunes, grapes, whatever, it was always more tart. Yeah. So this makes me think for for the par for the course. This is probably very good, but <coughs> par for Boca Rider, I think but, this um, is a lower third. And for the viewers at home who don't know what KC is, a good comparison because KC, also known as a blender. Yeah, so. Began by buying wort from other breweries? No, it's no, not true. It's not so, true. so we've had this discussion many times, Jeff. A thought, gypsy brewer I thought Casey also, and a contract brewer. I thought Casey also bought wort from So, them. Jeff, what is the difference between contract brewing and gypsy brewing? So, there really isn't a difference. Yes, there is. They're the same thing. No, they're not. There are. So, what's, what's gypsy brewing mean? So, a gypsy brewer, like a contract brewer, rents nope. the space from another brewer and brews 
Eat, well, so it brews either at the establishment <laughs> or sends in a recipe to be brewed by the establishment. Let me let me save Jeff for a minute. Mm-hmm. So, gypsy brewer would mean if I'm a brewer and Matt owned a brewery, I would say, Matt, will you rent me your space out for six hours mm-hmm. so I can brew? And Matt would say, sure. If I was contract brewing, I would say, so, Matt, here's my recipe. So, is he make between this a contract recipe or gypsy? for me? I, I don't know. I don't know. We've got, they should be gypsy, I would assume. No, evil twin sends in recipes. So then they're contract. But they're called the gypsy. Yeah, but they lie. The <laughs> same thing. No, All right, not. so is it is it worth it? So to- worth it. I mean, cost on this one, I traded for it. Let's say it's $100. I mean, Ooh. oh, they're pricey. Yeah. Worth it, Jeff? I, like, no, not for $100. Matt? I would say probably not for $100. I would say no. Secondary is anywhere from 180 to 300 I would say hell no. I would say hell no. I would Jeff. I would easily pay $40 for this beer. I'd say 30 but, bucks is fair. This, yeah. this was what it would cost you if you were over in Belgium. So, yeah, I don't, but if you compare this to Cantillon and Refontenin, they would be twenty. This would be forty. Yeah. It'd be a hard pill to swallow if you're over there. So yeah, I get it. Yeah, but we'll hey, bring, we'll bring some more on here. Yeah, I love I love this brewery. They're they're great. So right. that's it.